Hi, welcome back to another video. Today we are going to be talking about the good stuff, which is why I don't have friends. So today's gonna be a knit chat. I am crocheting, but you know me, we're calling it a knit chat. We're gonna knit, but we're gonna chat. Let's knit chat. Before I get into the nitty gritty, let's talk about what I'm making. I'm almost done with this project. I'm very excited about it. I've been doing campaigns with Hobby for the past couple of months and I have been absolutely loving it because not only do I get the opportunity to get the yarn free of charge, which is like the dream for a fiber arts creator, but it gives me inspo when I don't know what to make. So this is what we're looking like and I just have to finish up this sleeve. So I'm just doing double crochet around and around and around. <sighs> this is such a topic today, why I don't have friends. The haters are gonna love this. I'm gonna preface this by saying that this is a choice that I have made for myself. It's not like everybody hates me, okay? <laughs> Jumping in here quickly to say that I am starting to get my spark back and I just want to like point that out because while I am building friendships again finally and like working on that fixing that part of me again I for so long was more focused on fixing myself for myself when I was struggling with my mental health so now I'm going back and working on being able to build those relationships and friendships again, which I will speak on throughout um, this video as to why that was taken away from me. And I am starting to build those friendships again, which is really exciting, but still I find myself like keeping my distance and friendships are just not what they used to be for me. So that's just something I wanted to point out. Okay, enjoy the video. <laughs> Whatever, y'all will understand once I give you a little bit of a story time. <laughs> so when I was brainstorming on where to go with this, because I feel like I could talk for hours and hours and hours about how people have failed me time and time again, I think that we are just going to go, you know, uh, chronologically through the timeline starting in elementary school. I feel like elementary school is easy. That's that's where it's like the easiest to make friends. You just sort of click with people. I went to the same school district my whole life. I never moved or anything like that. So that made it easy too. I was always with the same group of people. And I will say that there are a solid number of people who I enjoyed my time with and they did last all the way through like we were friends all the way till graduation and then we all just kind of went our separate ways so in elementary school i would say it was relatively easy for me to make friends i got in trouble a lot in elementary school for having feelings and emotions <laughs> so i was lucky that that didn't really deter people from wanting to be my friend in any way um, in elementary school there's not really that coolness factor that people are fighting to achieve like there is in high school i do remember this one occasion where i got in a huge fight with my friends for my ninth birthday party i was in this like three-way friendship this little friend triangle and you know how it is when nowadays it's like well known that there's always the odd one out there's like the pair and then the extra there was that okay I was allowed to invite seven people to my ninth birthday party because it was a sleepover so it would have been a lot you know to take care of that many people and we were young so anyways I got to pick seven friends and I only picked one out of the three of our little triangle. So we got in a huge fight about that. And I think I learned a lot about friendship during that fight. And then in intermediate school, all three of the elementary schools combined. So I had way, not way more options, but way more options for friends. And I made some really good friends in intermediate school and um, going into middle school, that just continued for me. But middle school is where I started to have some problems with friends. I feel like middle school was when people started dating a lot um, and that wasn't really something that I did. I mean, I'm in a relationship right now and this is the first boyfriend I've ever had. So it wasn't something that I was actively taking part in and a lot of other people were. So I didn't really fit in in that department and that sort of made a lot of us split up and 
not we just we didn't have that thing in common you know so i got in this little group of friends in middle school we had like eight class periods or something like that um but luckily i did have like the same group of people in all of my classes i don't know that just made it like a little easier to build those relationships when you're spending more of the day together so i got in another like little friendship triangle there were three of us and um in eighth grade we were really excited because we all were supposed to have the same homeroom and if we had the same homeroom we would be way more likely to have a bunch of classes together. But then last minute, my homeroom was switched. So hashtag FOMO. They started hanging out a lot, a lot, a lot. And you know, I wasn't there. So they were getting closer and I wasn't. I remember them saying that they were hanging out after school and I literally invited myself to go. Um, very last minute, I invited myself, which is so bad, don't do that. But I felt so left out and they got like matching Christmas sweaters um, and I was just there. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like I've always been the odd one out. High school was where things really exploded in my face. <sighs> These are things I have never talked about on the internet because I have literal trauma about this um, and it has caused me some serious trust issues. <laughs> so I was in theater in high school. The stereotypes are true in some aspect that theater kids are very dramatic, okay? They are. I am too, so I'm not I'm, I'm a hypocrite, okay? Like, I am a dramatic ex-theater kid. But there's always this, like, competition where everybody is trying to be the best, but we're also trying to support each other. And for a long time, it was, like, fine because we were all young and we were just taking what we were given. But when we all started wanting better roles, better solos in choir, things that sound so stupid but meant so much to us at the time, we really, like, like, I had a lot of people turn their backs on me. I don't think people realize I was putting all of my time and energy into that, so no wonder I was like getting good solos and stuff because I was working so hard. Like I wouldn't get that nowadays because I don't sing anymore. Like it's not like it was just because of who I am. It was because I worked my booty off to get those. I deserved them, I did. So people started not liking me and saying that like I was a teacher's pet because I was getting solos in choir. <laughs> which was just not the case in any way. Um, if I didn't sound good, then I didn't get the solo. It's that easy. I think junior year, to be super specific, was like the downfall for me and all of my friendships that I had at the time. I think I realized quite quickly when I actually started looking deeply into my friendships that I don't get along with girls. And that makes me sound like so I'm not like other girls, but look me up and down right now, I am just like all the other girls. But the thing that I am unable to get behind is a lot of the cattiness that was taking place in the girls that I was surrounding myself with. In that way, it was just easier for me to have male friends. Does that make sense? But then I had this problem where all of my male friends would fall in love with me or like get the wrong idea. Even if I was making it blaringly obvious that we were just friends, it was never able to stay that way in their eyes. And once they go down that path, like it's the friendship is not the same anymore. <laughs> I have had that happen to me so many times, so many times, even since I've gotten into a relationship that people know about. <laughs> so because of that, I can't really have these guy friends because it never goes well. Um, so I do have some guys that I'm friends with that aren't that don't like women. That works for me, you know? <laughs> but as far as the girl pals, the girlfriends, let me tell you some stories. Let me tell you some stories. These are when I was a senior in high school, all of them. My senior year was quite the show. Honestly, it was like a really, really bad year for me. 
Um, that was <laughs> the lowest point of my life. I had people starting rumors about me. Um, I remember I was having a really hard time with my voice. I had lost my voice over the summer and it didn't really come back for a very long time. So my singing was <laughs> bad. And when at rehearsals and things and I was singing, my voice would crack or something, um, which it doesn't have to be embarrassing if you're surrounded by supportive people, um, but I was not. I was trying trying to be a big sister to some underclassmen at the time. I really just wanted them to feel welcome because I remember when I was an underclassman, I did not feel welcome. I had upperclassmen who like were absolutely evil and awful to me. So I wanted to make sure that they didn't have that experience. So I became friends with a lot of the younger people, um, but in like a motherly older sister kind of way not annoyingly i hate that <laughs> but um people knew i was struggling and they knew i was at the time very trusting somebody told it like went through a grapevine that two of my friends at the time were mocking me and making fun of me openly um and yeah mocking me for my voice crack and when i would cry and be upset about it that was a new level of hurt um, and what hurt even more was when I found out that it wasn't true and that all of these people came together to make up this lie. It's almost sad to me that it was so realistic that it was so possible that this could have happened because they were so not nice to me. They were the kinds of people who would only be friends with me when it was convenient to them. When being friends with me and saying that they were really close to me and, oh yeah, I'm helping Cassidy with this, would benefit them in some kind of way. If they had no one else, they had me. Those were hard. It was, it was like, oh, hey, it's study hall. Do you want to go somewhere during study hall? Yeah, sure. Okay, well, I'm waiting on one other person. I know you're already here, but can you sit in the back because they're going to sit in the front? What do you mean? What do you mean? I'm already here. And now I'm sitting in the back, like, this whole time. I don't know. It, it was just, like, really awkward, weird scenarios such as that. There was another situation. I don't know why I feel like I'm going to cry. There was one girl who I really struggled with in high school, um, and she was using me as a very convenient friend. I had been friends with her since elementary school actually, and she would like go around telling people that in elementary school I bullied her, which is just not the case. She was popular in elementary school and I was not. Why would I want to bully the girl that I wanted to be friends with? That just doesn't make sense to me. Uh, she's an awful person by the way. Um, I don't know how you can get angry at me for not supporting you for being a serial cheater on every boyfriend you've ever had. I'm not gonna support you with that. I don't know why you're mad at me about that. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just saying. All of these people I have unfollowed on everything because as I have started to heal, I realized that that's just best for me. But this person I was having a really, really hard time with. Every day there would be something that was said that would just scratch my brain a little bit. There were things said such as like, you're gonna eat all of that to the point where I wouldn't eat during lunch because I felt fat. <laughs> there was an underclassman that I had become really close with to the point where I was giving them rides to and from school when necessary. We would hang out all the time. We were very open with one another. Um, they would tell me secrets and I would be very open with them. Um, and one of the things I was very honest about was that this other person that was using me, I guess this is kind of confusing without names, but the person who would like make me feel fat and stuff, um, I didn't want to confront them about anything because at this point I'm like four or five months away from graduation and then I will never have to see her ever again, ever. I don't have to. So why would I make this scene blow this whole thing up make the next five months more miserable than they have to be because people will team up against me if I confront this person when I can just wait out the five months, deal with her until then, and yada yada. Well, this little underclassman gets a ride home um, from her one day and decides to tell her everything I said, everything that I confided in her for, everything I said was truthful. You know, hey, she said this and it really hurt me. Um, I would like to never talk to her again, but I'm just gonna wait it out. I lost all of my trust 
in people that day. I thought that we were so close. I thought that I could trust you with things that were hurting me and that were weighing on my chest and you turn around and you do that. That's just, that's just not right. So I stopped talking to them that day, <laughs> point blank. Um, I'm gonna speed up to college. This part's gonna make me cry <laughs> because this is still a wound that is healing um, and hurting. It also feels really crazy to talk about this because I've wanted to talk about this for so long um, and I was too scared, but I'm not scared anymore. <laughs> I roomed with people that I went to high school with. I had had rocky roads with them. Um, I don't know if they would say the same thing. Sorry, my freshman year sucked. It sucked. I was miserable. They would disappear um, in the middle of the night without saying anything and I would look at Life360. They were all at the movies um, without me. They didn't ask me if I wanted to go or anything. They would just exclude me in literally everything. They would make me feel like actual garbage. I would be really open um, about the fact that, because I was getting treated finally for my mental health problems. I had just gotten diagnosed with anxiety and depression and I was working through that and I was being very open with them about it um, because they were, had, they were um, <laughs> on similar journeys and so I, I trusted them and I hate that I did that. They were able to use that against me. They were able to use that against me. I told them what made me uncomfortable really early on. Hey, can we maybe not talk about this? Like, it's it's really triggering to me. <laughs> Makes my heart go. And they would go out of their way to bring it up over and over and over again. Or talk about my relationship in such awful ways. Comparing whose mental health was worse. Who does that? Who does that? Steal my things. Some things I've still never found. Don't know where that went. These are people who were supposed to be my friends. I just, I, it's annoying to me because I trusted them with so much information and they knew so much about me, which made it so much easier for them to stab me in the back when the time came. Fun fact, one of our roommates would sneak out and she was just not often in the room um and the other two would come into me and the i kid you not the only time that my other two roommates would talk to me was if they were talking trash on her now they're literally like a cult they all look exactly the same and they all follow in her footsteps no matter what she does because they're sheep they didn't like me because i had a personality and i wasn't gonna cave into them they wanted to match outfits and stuff and i was like no i kind of want to wear this today and they didn't like that <laughs> like it sounds so petty and like i don't have friends because i've been screwed over time and time again i don't have friends because i have been hurt by having them i don't have friends because i'm saving myself from that pain they've ruined the idea of friendship to me friendship means opening up being able to talk to somebody about your hardships but if they're gonna turn around and use those hardships against me then what am I supposed to do? I've been so hurt in the past by people who I thought loved me and really cared about me. And I was just wrong. And I don't think I misread the signs. I don't. I think I'm a really good reader of people. But the fakeness that people have at this age is just not something that I'm interested in taking part in. Um, and once I get into the workforce, the job force and get a real job, then I'll think about making friends. I am tired of the childishness. I am tired of the immaturity. I'm not gonna be friends with you if it's gonna hurt me in the long run. That's literally the opposite of what friendship is supposed to do. So I'm not gonna do it. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is why I don't have friends. I've raised my standards for friendship over the years because I am not going to have these friendships if the only reason I'm doing it is to have this large group of people around me say, oh my gosh, look how many friends I have, when they're all talking bad about me behind my back and not being real friends, not being good friends. I don't need that negativity. I would rather have a smaller group around me of people that actually care. I don't care about the popularity contests. I'm talking to you. I am talking to you. If that's all you care about, then you need a new hobby. I'm sorry. I have the people I need 
and they love me more than I could ask for and I love them the same. Um, but I hope you enjoyed this video. That is it for today. I have many more topics that I could talk about in future knit chats if you're interested. <laughs> I talked so much. I hope this video isn't too long. Wow. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you like and subscribe for more just like this one. And of course, if you really like me, make sure you follow me on all of my other social medias at Cassidy Lee Quinn on TikTok, at Cassidy Lee Quinn on Instagram, and go shop my closet at Cassidy Lee on Depop. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you around. <laughs> Bye!